And today I will discuss about design of walls and complete beams on ES533 reinforced concrete design. Uh, type of walls uh, based on load bearing, it has two types load bearing walls and non load bearing walls. Um, based on construction, solid walls, masonry walls, veneered walls, reinforced walls, cavity walls, and partition walls. Uh, the load bearing walls. Uh, a load bearing wall is a wall that bears a load resting upon it by conducting its weight to a foundation structure. The materials most often used to construct load bearing walls in large buildings are concrete, block, or brick. Na makikita po natin kung alin po yung non load bearing wall sa load bearing wall through the picture. Uh, application of load bearing walls on house on housing saka tall buildings uh, depending on the type of building and the number of stories load bearing walls are go gauge to the appropriate thickness to carry the weight above them without doing so it is possible that an outer wall could become unstable if the load exceed the strength of the material used potentially leading to the collapse of the structure And non-load bearing walls, uh, walls that are only intended to support themselves and the weight of the cladding or sheeting attached. Uh, non-load bearing walls provide no structural support and may be interior or exterior walls. Solid walls are structurally bonded by metal ties, masonry headers, or by joint reinforcement, where solid walls are used Insulation and mechanical equipment are often installed within a forward space on the interior side of the wall. Below grade, insulation is often placed on the exterior side of the wall. So you can see here, um, there is a three types of solid walls. Uh, brick wall, stone wall, and a concrete block wall. Uh, type, types of insulation in solid walls. Um, Internal wall insulation uh, Slightly reduce the floor area of any rooms in which it's supplied. The thickness of the insulation is around 100 millimeters. Um, it's disruptive but can be done room by room. Requires skirting boards, door frames, and external fittings to be removed and reattached. Can make it hard to fix heavy items to inside walls, although special fixings are available. It's generally cheaper to install than external wall insulation. As you can see on the picture, uh, kung paano po siya naka-apply sa isang wall. Uh, external wall insulation and can be applied without disruption to the whole household. Does not reduce the floor area of your home. Uh, reduces the appearance of outer walls, improves weatherproofing and sound resistance, heals cracks and gaps in the brickwork, which will reduce droughts, uh, increases the life of your walls by protecting the brickwork, is best installed at the same time as external refurbishment work to reduce the cost. It's not recommended if the outer walls are structurally unsound and cannot be repaired. Reinforced masonry walls uh, is any type of brick, concrete, or other type of masonry that is strengthened or fortified with the use of other building materials to increase resistance to deterioration due to weight bearing or other form of stress. One of the most common examples of reinforced masonry involves exterior walls that are created using concrete blocks or clay bricks. Tulad po na nakikita natin sa picture, kung ano pong klase yung reinforced masonry walls. It consists of bricks and concrete blocks. The weaknesses of the masonry without reinforcement, the sensitivity of rocks, and the low of flexural bearing capacity. Uh, reinforcing in brickwork is applied for two causes. Masonry is a quasi-brittle material and is very sensitive to cracking. Therefore, one part of the cracks can be prevented by using reinforced, reinforcing bars or mesh embed 
in the bed joint or the size of rocks can be significantly decreased. The flexural tension bearing capacity of masonry increases considerably with reinforcing. Yan. Using reinforcement to prevent cracks, horizontal bed joint reinforcement can be applied in the following cases. Um, if temperature changes or moisture content variations occur, the bricks may dry out and cracks will arise as consequences of shrinkage. Number two, strains resulting from differential settlement. Number three, creep can cause big cracks. Number four, at the corner of a building and at the cross junction cracks are very common due to the different strain of the differently loaded wall sections. This type of cracks can be decreased with the reinforcing of the junction. And the consecutive layers of a junction can be seen. Number five, in fill walls, in reinforced concrete frames can suffer damage due to the flexion of the floor. Number six, in the place of concentrated load induction, tensile stresses occur in the plane perpendicular to loading, which can be handled by bed joint reinforcement. Increasing the load bearing capacity, the reinforcement re improves the stiffness of the masonry and it, and it distributes the stresses almost uniformly. For, for, um, for example, by increasing the capacity of the masonry lintels or beams around openings, frameworks and steelworks may be prevented. For that purposes, prefabricated reinforcement meshes and lintel hooks are available. Number seven, if the walls of cellars and retaining walls are unable to carry the load from the pressure of the soil, it is recommended to use vertical joint reinforcement. However, the implementation is more difficult. Um, veneered walls. Um, a brick veneer wall is con constructed by having a non-structural external layer, usually with bricks and it is packed by an air cavity. The innermost element of this type of wall is structural can consist of wood, metal framing, or masonry. It has many advantages over solid masonry. It shares some of advantage of a cavity wall. It is a wall is lightweight, thermal efficient, and can help in reducing cost. As you can see on the picture, uh, paano po uh, binubuo yung isang veneered walls. Um, cavity walls and the cavity wall method of construction was introduced in the Northwest Europe during the 19th century and gained the widespread use from 1920s. Uh, in some early examples, stones were used to tie the two leaves of the cavity wall together. Initially, cavity widths were extremely narrow and were primarily implemented to prevent the passage of moisture into the interior of the building. And the cavity walls consist of skins separated by a hollow space cavity. The skins are commonly masonry such as brick or concrete block. Concrete block uh, is an absorbent material and therefore will slowly draw rainwater or even humidity into the wall. And the cavity serves as a way to drain this water back out through whip holes at the base of the wall system or above windows. And the reason of cavity insulation it keeps heat in is that the in is that the polymer and air in the cavity are good insulators. The partition walls. Uh, partition wall is a single wall or partition made using bricks, studding, glass, or other such materials. Different types of partition walls are created to divide the room or separate one area from the other. Partition walls are designed as non-load-bearing walls. It may be collapsible, foldable, or fixed. Um, there is a type of partition walls. Uh, number one is brick partition walls. Number two, concrete partition walls. Number three, glass partition walls. Number four, wood partition walls. Number 5, asbestos or GI sheets. Number 6, display or hollow brick partitions. Um, brick partition walls. 
this type of partition are cheapest as well as considered strong and fire resistant. Bricks are reinforced with iron stops or steel bars. It consists of brickwork within the framework of wooden members, namely studs, um, vertical members, and nugging pieces or horizontal members. Um, concrete partition walls and can be plain or reinforced. It may be cast in sight or built from panels or blocks precast in advance. These partitions are rigid and stable along both vertical and horizontal directions. And glass partition walls, um, this may be made from sheet glass or hollow glass bricks. Uh, sheets of glass are fixed in the framework of wooden members dividing the entire R into a number of panels. Glass blocks adds to the architectural beauty and also provide good daylight and they are soundproof and fireproof, need care and maintenance. Uh, um, Madalas natin nakakita yung glass partition wall sa mga offices, uh, mga commercial buildings. And, uh, wood partition walls. Uh, this type of partition walls consist of a wooden framework either supported on the floor below or by side walls. Uh, such partitions are not fire resistant and the timber forming the partition is likely to decay or be eaten away by white ants. And the major advantage of using this partition is light in weight, though costlier. Uh, asbestos sheet. A wooden frame is used to fix the, these sheets for the partitions. They are lighter in weight, thin, and cheaper. To make it more strong, specially manufactured asbestos slabs are used. Uh, fire resistant and make it have good heat and sound insulation properties. Um, clay, clay or hollow brick partition. Um, they are made from clay, terracotta, or concrete. They are light in weight, rigid, strong, economical, and good insulation. They are available in variety of sizes. Uh, coupling beams. Uh, five Commonly used types of coupling beams which are adapted by building codes in the design industry. Uh, there is a five, five type of coupling beams. Uh, number one is conventional arch coupling beams. Uh, number two, diagonally reinforced concrete coupling beams. Uh, number three, steel coupling beams. Number four, encased steel composite coupling beams. And number five, embedded steel plate composite coupling beams. Uh, conventional RC coupling beams um, refer to coupling beams re reinforced with horizontal rebars and closely spaced stirrups due to its rel relatively simple detailing and ease of construction. The conventional RC coupling beams is the most extensively used coupling beam type in building design. In low seismic risk areas, conventional RC coupling beams are sometimes sized wider than the connecting shear walls piers in flat slab buildings. However, the conventional reinforced in concrete coupling beams does not preserve good energy, dissipation, capacities under high cyclic shear stresses, and significant pinching phenomena present in its high stresses response. Diagonal shear failure and sliding shear failure are not avoidable in this type of coupling beam, even with closely spaced transverse reinforcing detailing. Ikita po natin dito sa picture kung ano po yung, ano po yung detail ng, ano, ng conventional RC coupling beams. Ayan siya. Yung, yung mismo detail sa actual construction kung itsura ng RC coupling beams. Uh, diagonally reinforced concrete coupling beams. Uh, in the 1960s, a diagonal rebar layout in concrete coupling beams was proposed to effectively arrest the coupling beam sliding shear failure at the base of the coupled shear wall piers. To date, the diagonally reinforced concrete coupling beams are recognized as the most effective type of reinforcing details to provide ductile performance with excellent energy dissipation capacity, especially when the span 
or depth ratio is less than 2. In the design of diagonally reinforced concrete coupling beam, the shear forces are resisted by the by the diagonal rebars only and the moment capacities are automatically provided by the diagonal truss members. Makikita po natin dito din ulit sa picture kung ano, kung ano yung detail ng diagonal reinforced concrete coupling beams. Ayan. So you can see here in the picture uh, yan po yung pic, yan po yung itsura ng diagonally reinforced concrete coupling beam sa actual. Steel and encased steel composite coupling beams. Steel coupling beams and encased steel composite coupling beams are used as viable alternatives to avoid the construction difficulties inherent in diagonally reinforced concrete coupling beams. Uh, the steel members for the two coupling beam types are implicitly wide flange steel members, although steel tubes. Um, it's indicate that both steel coupling beams and encased steel composite coupling, coupling beams can provide excellent ductility and energy dissipation capacities, which are comparable to those diagonally reinforced concrete coupling beams. For this, for these two types of coupling beams, both shear forces and flexural moments are assumed to be entirely resisted by the steel member. And the benefits of the concrete encasement are currently ignored due to a lack of data. The concrete encasement provides higher beam stiffness and acts as a fireproofing layer for the encased steel beams. Embed steel plate composite coupling beam. To, al to elevate the con conflict between steel members and shear wall reinforcement, designer can consider the use of embedded steel plate composite coupling beams. Uh, headed studs are welded to both vertical faces of the steel plate in a typical embedded steel plate composite coupling beam and pose much less disturbance to shear wall vertical reinforcement. Although special detailing is still needed for the horizontal confinement rebars, the headed studs are necessary to provide appropriate anchorage and transfer forces between the concrete portion and the steel plate. It indicates that the presence of the, the steel plates can effectively hinder the development of diagonal cracks and prevent vital failures of concrete coupling beams, and the embedded steel plate composite coupling beam exhibits much better ductile performance and deformability than comparable conventional reinforcement concrete coupling beams. Ayan. So, makikita po natin sa picture, ayan po yung sa actual na construction. 